Hey everybody, if you wanna learn how to create a jump link, keep watching. And if you don't know what a jump link is, don't worry, I'm gonna teach you. A jump link is any link on a website that moves throughout the same page. So basically, you're linking within the exact same post. Now, why would we wanna do this? It's really helpful for organization and for user experience. So you've probably used a jump link before if you've ever used a table of contents. A table of contents, when you click on the link, it moves you through the post to whatever that relevant heading is. That's what we're creating. Now, you do not need to manually code a table of contents. There are so many plugins out there that'll do that for you. I mean, if you want to, go for it, but you do not have to. But the reason that we do this is for, well, there are a couple of reasons. Number one, for something like this. I am making an SEO dictionary that will have over 250 words in it. And I wanna make it easy for people to jump to whatever letter of the alphabet they're looking for. But we have a small problem. The H2s of all, like all the words are an H2. So I don't have an H2 that's A, B, C, D that would show up in the table of contents. And even if it did, all of the other words are gonna show up there too. And this dictionary has over 250 words. I stopped counting at that point. So I don't want a table of contents that's 250 words long that's not helpful. So I need to create something custom or else I'd have to like reformat the whole post. And based on competitors and H2 is what is needed for the header. So I can't really change that. That's where this comes in. Now, another use case is if you want to self-refer within the same post. So I see a lot of people in blog posts saying, as I said before, or you'll see this down below. Well, okay, but then someone has to go find that thing. And we are all about making our users' life easier. So if I was referring within this post, let's say I'm talking about AdSense and I say, AdSense is the kind of background runner for Mediavine. Okay, if someone doesn't know what Mediavine is, then I want to hyperlink to the definition for Mediavine. So that's where I'm gonna create a jump link and embed it, which is just an embedded link is just where the, basically the word is, has a link hidden inside of it rather than written out. Um, and so then someone could click on that and then go to the definition for Mediavine. That's going to make it much easier, especially on a phone where it's hard to like command F something because there's no keyboard <laughs> to do that with. Um, that's going to make it easier for them. And normal blog posts do this too. Even if you're not writing about SEO or blogging, I do this on my travel site. If I was referring to um, maybe the cost of living somewhere, but I don't get to that for like eight headers, I could link to that header. That way someone could jump to it really quickly. A lot of people will do that and they'll just grab the link um, from their table of contents. But what if it's not in your table of contents? What if you want to link to um, a specific sentence? What if you want to link to uh, an H4 and you don't put H4s in your table of contents? Or what if you wanna do something like this? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it super simply. You really just need to know how to create a link and then you'll be good to go. So all we're gonna do, we're in the back end of She Knows SEO right now, editing a post it's where we need to be. So you can see I have a couple here already. I have my A, B, C, and now I've just added a D. That way we have something to work off of. So let's say D is uh, domain authority. And you can do this whether it's normal text or a heading. For my purposes right now, I want it to be a heading, but it really could be anything. And I want to show you all how it looks. So we're going to highlight whatever we're looking for and then edit as HTML. Now, I like to edit block by block as HTML rather than viewing the code editor for the whole post. It gets a little bit messy, especially when we're trying to um, hyperlink the A, B, C, D, E, F whole alphabet at the top. It's just going to get a bit wonky. So I prefer to do it block by block. So if we edit as HTML, you'll notice I have something that says ID equals quote A close quotes. That is the ID I have given to this term. And so it says A. I have assigned that. No one's really going to see it. I'll show you where you can kind of see it, but most people won't look for it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is just the unique identification I gave that said, okay, I'm going to call this A. So when I link to A, this is where you're going. That's how that works. Now you can add this to anything you want. So if we come to the domain authority, we're gonna edit as HTML and you can see it doesn't have that. So all you have to do is right before the little arrow before the word, you're gonna press space ID equals open quotes, 
whatever ID you want to give it. It can be multiple words. It can be, if you're doing multiple words though, it has to have um, a hyphen or a dash between it, like DA or something if you want it to. So I'm just going to put D because that's how we're formatting it, but it really could be anything. So now I've named it, but now I need to call that name from somewhere. So if we come up to D up here, we're just going to highlight it and then click our little link button. And all you need to do is put hashtag D. That's it. And now it's going to work. So I just need to refresh our preview and then I'll show you what it looks like. Sorry, sometimes Descript slows things, everything slows things down on my computer. It's probably not any of the video players. It's probably the thousands of tabs I have open. But you can see now these are all linked. And when I click on D, we get moved right down to it. So it's going to appear at the top of the screen. And now this in the URL is the only place you're going to see it. Now we're in preview. It's not a published post. So you can see the weird preview P equals nonsense. That'll just be your usual slug or like ending um, of your hyper of your pardon me, permalink but it'll say hashtag D and that's just going to be whatever name you gave it. So that could be a sentence. It could be whatever, but technically people can kind of see it. So probably don't put profanity or something kind of like ridiculous or horrible. Um, keep it PG 13 and <laughs> keep it easy. And typically I recommend keeping it as simple as possible because it just makes it easier to link to. Um, you don't want to have to be like hashtag, the best cookie in New York City is from here. Like that's really long. So you could just say cookie. <laughs> it's just something that you can remember and link to. Now this won't work if I go to another page now though and try to link to hashtag D. It's gonna try to do that within the same document. So at that point, that's where it gets a little bit confusing and you would actually need to do a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of coding. It's not really that bad. So I did it we edit as HTML with the first one just to show you how it would oh no I did I did the same thing never mind so this is how you would do it basically um, but if you wanted to do it where you were being more specific to another post you would put the full URL da, 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 text here of that page first so we just need to link to the page and then that section. Now you'll probably have seen this in your Google analytics before when you're looking at um, posts on your site, that get traffic. Sometimes there's a URL where it's like a post that you have hashtag and then some extra words, usually one of your headings. And that typically is where you got picked up in like people also ask or something where it's jumping to a section of text in your site. So it's the same idea here. You just need to create that ID on that page so it exists somewhere. So again, it's kind of like um, having like a PO box almost like it's not your house, but it's somewhere you get mail. And so it's somewhere that someone can send something. And here we are sending traffic to that position. And that's really as simple as it gets. It, it does not need to be super complex. Um, there are tons of different ways you can use this. I find this is the easiest and best way when you need to organize things a little bit easier for your audience, um, refer to yourself within the same post and make sure that you are making it easy for the user to get through the page. The longer someone spends time on the page, the better it is for us. That is going to help us get long, like get a longer uh, session duration. Once you have ads, it's going to benefit you by having ads run on your site longer and you'll make more money. But also if someone's on your site longer, actually reading and engaging with your content, you can help them a lot more. That's how you build trust. It's how you build community. It's how you get people to return time and time again to help you, or pardon me, so you can help them. And it does kind of help you because you're going to make money off of it eventually. But we really want to make sure that we are benefiting the user. So if I had just put up a list of 250 something um, different words in SEO, and these are like every word I have ever said or heard or used in the last month about SEO, um, even some older terms that people do reference, just like literally I went with everything someone would ask about that I found in my emails in my Facebook group on Twitter. Um, anything y'all have asked me, I put it in this. If I just gave you that list, I know I would get emails that go, this is great, but it's hard to find stuff. And I totally respect that, especially because a lot of people use their phones. And that's where having a system like this, where someone can quickly jump to whatever they need, that's why it's called a jump link, is really, really helpful. And you can use these on any page of your site. You can use them on sales pages. 
they work basically anywhere. <laughs> it's just nice when you're doing it within the same post that you can just command K and then hashtag whatever the ID is, and then it's so easy for them to jump to. Then you don't need any extraneous code or extra bits or bobs. It's very, very simple. I've even done this on socials when I'm promoting a specific thing inside of a post. Um, if you've ever clicked on something where I was giving, the, giving an example of a name generator, I send people to my travel blog name post. Uh, let me find it. So I have a suggestion of like a bunch of travel blog names, but I have a name generator inside of it. I didn't want to make its own post. Maybe I will one day. And you can see here, okay, if you click on travel blog name generator, you'll jump to it. And at the top, this is a perfect example of how it looks. It is hashtag travel underscore blog underscore name underscore generators. So sorry, I do hyphens usually, but you can do an underscore as well, just to be clear. Um, I do hyphens the way I know I made it, not the um, table of contents. But now you can see what the name generators look like. If I just linked to this post and told people come here, how would you know there's a name generator in it? I mean, hopefully you could assume that like I didn't make a massive mistake and you would scroll a little bit, but it takes a second to find them. So being able to link to the exact answer people need is way more helpful. And that's what we're about. We are creating helpful content, making sure we have a good user experience and making it easy for people to move through our site to get the content that they need and get the help they need. So they'll come back hopefully <laughs> and help us um, help them basically. I hope this was super helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, please like, and subscribe. Um, this is one of many tutorials I have on my channel. You can find all sorts of different helpful things from creating a staging site to using different popular plugins to benefit your site. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.